Hi and welcome. I'm now going to give you a brief overview of Scratch. As you go through this overview, if it's a little too quick, remember I'm a video, not live, so you can rewind and rewatch me to your heart's content. Maybe even if you have trouble sleeping, help you put you to sleep. All right, let's jump in. So some of the main areas of Scratch is the code area. These are where all the blocks you can drag in to give commands to your sprites. The cat is classified as a sprite. All right. There's also the costumes tab, which allow you to do some animations, like make it look like it's walk. And the sounds, which allow you to add sound effects to your sprite. Now, this area over here is called the stage. And the stage is where everything happens. So all the directions and code you give, what you see what happens happens on the stage and if you click on these four squares it goes big and all you see is the stage Go back. over here are the attributes of your sprite such as your name which you can change whether that sprite is showing or hiding the size of the sprite which is in a percent so i can make it smaller by going down to 20 percent I can also make it bigger than 100 by going 120%. But I'm going to go back to 100. And this is the direction. The direction shows which way your sprite is pointing. In this case, the cat. So 90 is to the right. 0 is straight up, if I can get it there. You can always type it if you can't get it exactly. To the left is negative 90, and down is 180. There we go. I'm going to reset it back to 90. And this X and Y give the X, Y position of your sprite on the screen. In the background, there is a coordinate plane, which we'll talk about a little more in the next challenge but it can tell you where your cat is on the screen. You see the numbers changing as I move the cat. All right, that's the basics. One last thing, there are backdrops. If you click on here, the backdrop is the background of the screen. And you'll see if you click on this change to backdrops and you can change backdrops. And I can search here. I'm just gonna give it a nice Arctic feel. It's winter time right now, so why not? All right, let's go back to my sprite. I'm going to click on the sprite to teach some basics of the coding. So if I want to give this sprite some directions, I move blocks over into this area. So if I want to move 10 steps, I'm going to move the move 10 steps block. Yes, no pun intended. And to see what happens, I'm going to click on it. Okay, it moved, but not like 10 cat steps. That's because it's not really 10 steps. It's 10 pixels. Pixels are the little squares that make up the image on a computer screen. And if I zoomed in there, you'd see this whole screen is just a ton of little squares. That's the magic of technology. So that's great, but I want to do more than just move. I want to also turn. So I'm going to drag this turn block here. Instead of turn 15 degrees, I'm going to say turn 90. All right. So now it should do both of these. And the way coding works is it always goes from top to bottom. So it should move 10 steps, then turn 90 degrees. I'm going to click on it to see. Wait, it just looked like it turned 90 degrees. I didn't see it move 10 steps to do. Well, that's because the computer does things so fast. It actually did move 10 steps and then turn 90 degrees. I'm going to move this back 90. It just did it so fast you couldn't really see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a weight block. If I click on control, something called weight, and in between the move and the turn, I'm going to put this weight block. I'm going to do it again. Now, the screen flying seems like it should start it, so I'm going to click on it. But nothing happens. Well, this green flag is used all the time to start code. And when you have multiple scripts, multiple, 
multiple sprites, it's really useful. But you have to tell your code to start when green flag is clicked. And to do that, you click on events and there's a block that says when green flag clicked and I'm going to attach it to the top. All right, now let's see if it moves 10 steps, wait one second and then turn 90 degrees. Move 10 steps, turn 90 degrees. Looks great. Now that 10 steps was hard to see, so I'm going to change it from 10 steps to 100 steps. So you can see it again a little more clearly. Move 100 steps, turn 90 degrees. Perfect. All right, I'm going to go back to 90 degrees, move it back to the center. That's great. But I don't really want that weight block there for this project. So I'm going to get rid of it. Click it and drag it out. Uh oh, my turn block came with it. So the rule in Scratch, whatever block you grab, all the blocks under it will come with it too. So to get rid of that weight block, I can drag off the weight block, take out the 90 block, reconnect it up here, and then take the weight block and move over here, pop, it disappears. Now it will happen much faster. All right, if I click the green flag, it does it. And if I click the green flag over and over again, it looks like it's moving in a square. Well, it actually is moving in the square, but I don't want to have to click the green flag over and over again. The thing with the computer is, unlike us humans who get bored if we do the same thing over and over again, right? I know I do. I don't know about you. The computer's great at doing the same thing over and over again. Doesn't complain at all. And there's special blocks for that. So if you go to control, there's the repeat block forever and the repeat until block. The repeat block will repeat this how many times I put it in there. The forever block will do it forever over and over again. So I'm going to drag the forever block over here. Now you'll see it goes really fast around, a little faster than I would like to be honest. Um, and it looks like a square, but I'm not sure it's an exact square. So I'm going to use something called a pen block. And I'm going to go down here to pen. Now you may not have that on your scratch and I'm going to quickly show you how to get it. Down here are sort of extra block sets. When you click on this, there's all sorts of fun blocks in here. Some of them you need extra hardware for, but a lot of them you don't. And pen is one of them. So I'm going to click on pen and go there. And the way pen works is every sprite has this sort of invisible pen and if you can see from my hand. And when it's down, when you move, the sprite draws. When it's up and the sprite moves, it doesn't draw. So it's like leaving a trail. It's a trail of breadcrumbs, but in this case, ink. So I can put the pen down and I could put it in before the forever because once it's penned down, the pen will stay down until I say pen up. I don't have to put it in the forever. In fact, I'm going to put it outside the forever just in case later on I want to put the pen up for some reason. So I'm going to put it there and draw. Hey, I was right. It is a square. I have to stop. And it creates a perfect square because a square is a perfect 90 degrees. Okay. Now, let's say I want to erase that. Well, there's the erase all block. And I could actually just double click it on it or click on it once. Sorry. Click on it once over here and it'll erase all. I could also say when I hit the green flag, I want to erase all and then put pen down, which I'm going to do. And now, no matter where I move the cat, it will erase it and draw a square. All right, but instead of 90 degrees, I'm going to have a little fun. Just to show you something fun, I'm going to change it to 92 degrees. And there, you start getting a really neat pattern. I say it looks like a donut. Not really delicious like a donut, but it still looks really pretty. Well, that's a basic intro into Scratch. It gives you the basics to complete the rest of the challenges. Remember, each challenge builds a specific skill. Take your time, enjoy them, and learn. All right, good luck.